PGA Tour is one of the most prestigious sporting associations in the world, and we are honored to have you be a part of it. One of the most important aspects of running one of our tournaments is the safety of our guests, including participants, spectators, volunteers, vendors, and employees. The PGA Tour and our tournaments have always stood for excellence. We set the standard on all levels, including golf cart safety. We expect anyone driving a cart at our tournaments to exercise caution and to follow our golf cart safety and to set a culture of safety. To that end, we thank you in advance for watching this video on golf cart safety. Given the large pedestrian crowds, temporary structures, and fluid operations, golf tournaments present a unique environment that requires special attention to safety. Golf carts are a necessary part of the operation in a tournament, but they can be dangerous if not handled properly. Golf cart accidents are due primarily to driver error and the environment in which they operate. For example, accidents may occur due to a vendor, volunteer, or employee running into a spectator with a golf cart. Accidents can also occur due to golf carts being hit by or hitting an automobile, passengers being ejected or falling off golf carts, and golf carts hitting stationary objects, including buildings, other golf carts, trees, low-hanging branches, bushes, curbs, fences, and ropes. We also know that high speed, hidden corners, hilly terrain, and spectators running out in front of golf carts are all contributing factors to these accidents. In order to prevent accidents and injuries and to provide an enjoyable experience for all who attend our tournaments, it is important that anyone driving a golf cart understands the expectations, operations, and enforcement of our golf cart safety rules. Now let's cover important safety rules we've established to prevent golf cart related accidents and injuries. Safety rule number one, only authorized people may drive a golf cart. We only allow authorized people who have been properly trained to drive a golf cart at a tournament. Drivers should be at least 18 years of age and carry a valid driver's license. All golf carts are specifically assigned at our tournaments. Do not drive a golf cart that is not assigned to you or allow a guest to drive your assigned golf cart. The driver has full responsibility for the safe operation of the assigned golf cart at all times. So how do you prevent yourself, as the driver of the golf cart, from being involved in an accident? Follow the rest of these safety rules to reduce your risk of an accident. Safety rule number two, no golf cart will be operated by an intoxicated person. You must not consume alcohol or drugs as they will impair your ability to drive. Even a small amount of alcohol can impair your thinking, reasoning, and reaction time. You need total control of all your faculties when operating off-road around thousands of spectators and other moving vehicles. Also, even prescription and over-the-counter medications can affect your ability to drive. If you are taking medications, consult the label and even your doctor to help you decide if you should drive. Safety rule number three, prior to driving the golf cart, check to see if it's set to go forward or backward and make adjustments as necessary. Each time you move the golf cart, always check to make sure the shifter is set to go in the direction you intend. If people are expecting the cart to go forward and it suddenly goes backward, they can slide right up the seat and be injured. Also, you could back right into a cart, obstruction, or person behind you. Safety rule number four, do not overload the golf cart with passengers or supplies. You should never exceed the number of passengers the golf cart is designed to carry. Three people might fit in the front seat, but now you are cramped for space and it becomes very difficult to control the cart. Don't allow anyone to ride on the back platform of the vehicle. The vehicle is not designed for the weight of a person on the back platform. This will change the center of gravity of the vehicle and increase the risk of a rollover, not to mention the high likelihood of the person on the back being ejected from the cart. Always use a four-person golf cart or multi-person cart to shuttle players and caddies or to transport multiple people. The same principle applies when transporting supplies on the golf course. Always be sure that supplies are properly secured and the weight is evenly distributed before driving. If you are driving the ADA shuttle cart, take precaution to drive extra slow and avoid bumps when possible. 
Children under the age of five are permitted to ride on the laps of adult passengers, and other small children may ride in between two adults or older children, not on the outside where they could easily fall out of the golf cart. Safety rule number five, do not drive the golf cart until all occupants are seated. Never put the vehicle in motion until all passengers are safely seated inside the vehicle. And don't allow passengers to enter or exit the vehicle while it is in motion. Also, make sure you and your passengers have your arms and legs inside the golf cart when it's in motion. If you brush a tree or other stationary object, another golf cart, or even a pedestrian, it could also result in a serious injury. Safety rule number six, never stand up in a moving golf cart. Never stand up while driving as you will lose your ability to properly control the golf cart. If you want to see over a crowd or obstacle, come to a complete stop, set the parking brake, and get out of the cart. Also, do not allow anyone to ride standing in the golf cart. Safety rule number seven, drive courteously and follow all traffic and operational rules on the course. Driving a golf cart is similar to driving a motor vehicle, and many of the same traffic and operational rules apply. Never make a sharp turn at a high speed. Your sudden change of direction could eject passengers, resulting in a rollover, or cause you to be struck by another golf cart operator who didn't expect your sudden change in direction. When following another golf cart, maintain a safe following distance so that if they stop suddenly, you won't rear-end them. Remember, they don't have brake lights, so it will take you longer to perceive that they're stopping. Stay in designated golf cart operating areas. You will receive guidance on where to operate golf carts, which is normally with golf carts on one side of the course and people on the other. Signs will be posted, indicating where you can and cannot drive. Never cross a barrier such as a fence or drive under a rope. It may be there to keep you out due to hazards that you can't see from where you are, such as a steep slope, loose gravel, a sudden drop-off, or a water hazard. Avoid distractions while driving, such as looking at the course map, eating, reaching for objects, talking on a cell phone, texting, and even looking at a passenger while talking. When turning, look all around the vehicle before you turn to make sure you are not being passed by another golf cart and that the area is clear of hazards and approaching people. Slow down and make a gradual turn. Always yield the right of way to pedestrians. Also, realize that an electric golf cart is so quiet that oftentimes pedestrians will not hear you approaching and may suddenly change direction right into your path of travel. Be sure to provide a verbal warning as you are driving through heavy crowds of people. Safety rule number eight, always drive straight up and down a hill. To prevent a rollover accident, always drive straight up and down steep inclines. Golf carts are not designed to traverse steep hills at an angle. The weight of you, your passengers, and cargo raises the center of gravity of the vehicle, making it easier to tip over when it's operated at a steep side angle. If necessary, drive all the way to the bottom of a hill, pumping your brakes as you descend the hill to control speed. Travel across the bottom of the hill on a flat area then drive straight up the hill to your destination. If the golf cart stalls while traveling uphill, slowly back straight down the hill. Never allow the brakes to lock up, especially when traveling up or down a steep incline. Most golf carts only have rear wheel brakes, and when they lock up, the vehicle tends to fishtail or even spin out, and this commonly leads to a rollover accident. Safety rule number nine, slow down and drive with extra caution to adjust to course conditions. Wet grass or loose gravel increases the possibility of loss of control and a spin out. Slow down to a crawl when operating in these conditions. The faster you drive, the greater your risk of an accident. Your maximum speed should be that of a, a brisk walk, and that is only when you're in the clear, you can see all around you, and you're not approaching any hazards, such as stationary objects, including other golf carts, spectators, buildings, trees, low-hanging branches, speed bumps, etc. Safety rule number 10, set the parking brake and remove the key when leaving the golf cart. When you stop to load or unload passengers and supplies, try to stop in an area where you are not blocking the flow of other golf carts and spectator traffic. Always set the parking brake 
even if you're only stopping for a moment. If you're going to leave the golf cart, even if only for a few minutes, take the key with you. By following these safety best practices, you can reduce the risk of having an accident. We thank you for taking the time to watch this video, to committing to a culture of safety, and to ensuring a safe environment for all attending PGA Tour events. Thank you. You know, it's, it's fun to watch that video, and it's, you know, you can laugh at it a little bit. Um, the, the fun thing for me is that I know most of the people that are in that video, and I know how they drive. <laughs> um, but the truth is, it is serious business. Um, we do need to, to take precautions out there. We're on the golf course. Um, if we have the number of spectators that we expect out there, um, it will be crowded. Um, I'm glad that the video covers taking your key with you. That's, that's crucial, to be honest. If you are in a golf cart and you park it, even if it's for a minute, take the key out, put it in your pocket, when you sit back down, the golf cart will probably still be there. If you don't, it may not. Um, and that's important, too. Um, any questions about the golf cart video? So I'm going to quickly go over the tournament week schedule. Um, the first three days that we've got on here, we are closed to the public. So we're closed Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Uh, we are open Thursday through Sunday. We expect most players to arrive probably Monday evening because they are coming from the West Coast. We're just getting their reservations now, and they're not going to get here probably until Monday evening or even some on Tuesday. Um, Tuesday, they'll spend uh, most of the day, we anticipate, on the golf course uh, because many of them have not seen the Country Club of Virginia James River course before. Um, so they'll be anxious to get out there to play the golf course and, and hit balls and, and get ready. Um, Wednesday, still close to the public, but it is day one of our Pro-Am. And I think the plan is to have marshals out there that day. Is that correct? Or like a scaled back version? Rudy will go into that later. Sorry, I don't mean to get ahead of it. Um, Wednesday and Thursday are our longest days. Um, we have golf from shortly after the sun comes up until hopefully when the sun goes down and no later than that. Um, we will have 36 groups we anticipate each day, uh, Wednesday and Thursday, playing in that Pro-Am. And they're lengthy rounds, for those of you that might have played in them in the past. Um, we actually will also have PGA sectional professionals with most of the groups to help with pace of play. We're encouraging the players to pick up if they're a par or higher because they can't help their team if that's the case. Um, because PAR is your partner in the Pro-Am, so we're, we're hoping to speed play and get all 36 groups around by sundown, which is about 10 minutes after 6. Same exact schedule on Thursday. The only difference is that we are open to the public on Thursday. We do want to give our, our spectators the opportunity to come out, certainly for one day um, during the Pro-Am, because it's a more relaxed day. Uh, the players usually spend a little bit more time kind of interacting with the fans, um, signing autographs after their rounds, so it can be a fun day to have the public out there. We don't anticipate huge crowds that day. Um, Friday is kind of showtime. Um, gates will open at 8 o'clock, but as you can see, the Volunteer Village will open much before that. So for those of you that get there before that, um, you can stop in Volunteer Village uh, to get something to eat or a cup of coffee. That'll be on the same side of the street as where the shuttle drops off, which is on the, I guess, the west side of South Gaskins. Um, the Volunteer Village is a, a sizable tent that will be on near the 18th green of the um, Tuckahoe Creek course. So our tee times on, thir on Friday and Saturday go from 8.40 to 12.34. The current plan is to play in 27 twosomes because we only have 54 players. Um, I was on the phone actually just a couple days ago with the rules officials who um, the tour is in Cary, North Carolina this week, and they've already told me to have a heads up. They had to go to threesomes off two tees, one and ten, just because of the low temperatures. So we're hoping that it's beautiful weather and that we don't have that here. But this group, that will be crucial to kind of just stay tuned. Um, and you'll get emails and you'll get lots of communication if there is a change on that. If there is a change, it's obviously pretty important to this group because we'll be going off the first tee and the 10th tee, so it will change arrival times. So just keep that in the back of your mind that the possibility does, is, does exist. Hopefully we don't have to go there, but it does exist. Um, what else can I highlight here? Oh, on Saturday after play, um, we will do a military appreciation ceremony, kind of part of the military program for the whole week. Um, for those of you that don't know, any active, retired, reserve, uh, veteran, military personnel are admitted free to the grounds. Um, and, on, and like I said, after play, we'll do something right near the 18th green, obviously not on the 18th green, probably in the fairway just short of it, um, where we recognize them. So that will be fun, and hopefully folks stay for that. Sunday, everything shifts up an hour, because lucky us, we got the weekend where we have to shift the clocks back Saturday night. <laughs> Great stuff. When I, I, I checked that very quickly when I saw the, the calendar and the schedule for this year, and I, I had a, I don't really get too high and low, but that, that bothered me a little bit. 
um, the good news is that if you forget to set your clock, you're going to be an hour early. <laughs> it won't be an hour late like it would be in the springtime. Um, but anyway, keep that in mind as you go to sleep Saturday evening. So everything shifts up an hour. Um, gates will open at 7 instead of 8. Tea times will move up to 7.40 instead of 8.40. Um, and then the Golf Channel coverage shifts an hour early, and we hope to finish by 3.30. Parking, always the question. Everybody wants to know, where are they parking? So you all in this room, um, or I should say most of you in this room, will be parking at the general parking lot at the West Creek soccer fields um, each day that you're working. Um, there's no fee for you all to park. So as long as you have your volunteer credential with you and show that to, att to the attendants at the lot, you go in, you do not pay. You um, will ride the shuttle to the golf course. It's about a 15 minute ride. Uh, hopefully early in the morning, it's even faster than that, no traffic. Um, so we feel pretty good about our, our parking situation. Um, preferred parking is mostly for sponsors. Um, and there are a couple of passes in each sponsorship package. However, we are parking, for those of you that are coming out on Wednesday to Marshall Holes, we will park you there just on Wednesday. So I know a little confusing. So when you come out on Wednesday, you will be parking in that preferred lot, Thursday through Sunday in general parking. And the preferred lot is, is actually close to the golf course. It's in a property owned by the Gumminick um, Corporation that um, is, I guess, on the north side of River Road as you approach Gaskins uh, from the east. So that's about a three minute shuttle ride. Okay, what you can bring with you to the golf course, this is for volunteers, for the public, for everybody. Um, the nice thing now is you are allowed to bring your cell phone. Please make sure you have it on silent, that's important. If you're a marshal and you're standing next to the green and your phone rings, I don't wanna be there. <laughs> our guys will be upset with that. Um, they know it's a part of, you know, it's a part of our world today, but just please make sure you have it on silent. Um, you all, as marshals, will be out there. You know, we, got, we get it that it's long days. You can bring a chair with you, like one of those folding chairs. Please leave the bag at home, though. You cannot bring the bag. So you can bring the chair if it's a folding chair, but do not bring the bag. Um, you can bring um, an umbrella, seat cushion, binoculars, all acceptable. Things that you cannot bring, perhaps more important, you cannot bring backpacks, anything bigger than six by six by six into the golf course. I know that's small. Um, but that's the rule, and that's the rule really at many stadiums and, and public events nationwide. So that's, we've, uh, we've gone with that as well. Um, signs, banners are not permitted in. Selfie sticks, that's something people do like to bring. Where they will not be allowed in. Um, you, cannot, you can bring a camera on Thursday during the Pro-Am. You cannot bring a camera Friday through Sunday. It's amazing. You don't see anybody carrying cameras anymore, right, because you've got your phone. Um, but you can bring a, a camera on, on Thursday only. And the rule, so you all know too, because you'll be on our front lines talking with spectators and interacting with them, is that if they have their phone out and they're taking pictures, what we ask them to do is not take pictures close to play. So if they're away from play and it's not distracting the players and you don't have your phone on silent and it clicks when you hit the photo button, that's a problem. But if you're away from play, it's acceptable. Um, what is not acceptable is to shoot video. I know that you can't really tell the difference between when someone's standing there with their phone or they're taking video or, or photos, but that is, that's the, the line that we're telling. Um, alcoholic beverages, that goes without saying. Can't bring that in. Weapons or firearms. And um, the key there, too, is that we will have screening taking place in the parking lots. So when you step out of your vehicle and you go to the shuttle bus stop and you have something that you should not have, you'll be asked to go back to your vehicle, return it to your vehicle. The hope, obviously, is to um, prevent folks getting all the way to the golf course and having something they should not have, because we will not have a system set up where we can check that item for you. That is, that's new in the past that so we have checked items, um, but there have been some challenges with that too because obviously we don't want to have anything sitting around that we shouldn't have that could potentially danger our spectators. So no checking items. Okay, so here's a little bit more detail on bags that are approved. Like we talked about, any bag, whether it's clear or not, you can bring it in if it's six by six by six or smaller. There's this new rule that if you have a clear bag, kind of like the bag that you have your volunteer uniform in, you can bring that at the size of 12 by six by 12. Um, obviously, a, a gallon plastic freezer bag fits into that category of 12 by 6 by 12. And if you have medical um, supplies that you need to bring, those are permitted. Um, they will be inspected at the main gate. Again, I know we're going to a lot of detail here, but because you are eyes and ears out there, we do want to do this with you and make sure that you're aware. So these are other items that are not approved as far as bags. Kind of, you know, if you keep the 12, the six by six by six in your mind, um, that's really what I think. That's if you're thinking of one thing, that's the one thing I would encourage you to think about is if it's bigger than that, if it isn't clear, it shouldn't be there. 
And um, like the lieutenant said, it certainly is not your role to approach a spectator to let them know that they can't have that. The protocol that we will set in place um, is that you, as a marshal, would get in touch with your whole captain, who will have a radio, and the whole captain can then get in touch with the, the proper personnel, and they'll be training for that. So please, it is not your role to approach anyone on the golf course. Like the lieutenant said, if you see something, we do want to hear from you, but you do not, you should absolutely not approach that person. We, we respect that that's not your, your role out there. Course map, I think there's one of these too in the volunteer handbook that's in your envelope. So um, it probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense for me to go over it now because I would think that many people can't see it up here on the screen with the small writing. Um, if you have questions about it, we can take them from you later. Um, I'll be here all day, obviously. So Volunteer Village, like we talked about earlier, Volunteer Village is located on the Tucko Creek course near the 18th Green. Um, it's basically the first large tent that you'll see when you step off the shuttle bus. Um, you can go there to get something to eat. Most Committees do check in there in the morning, so if you're told to, hey, at least just make sure you check in there so we know that you're here, please do that. Um, and many committees will also host meetings in that space throughout the day if you need to get together as a group. Rudy will probably go into that further um, with each hole. Your credential, you must have that credential with you. If you don't have it when you get to parking, you're going to get charged, and then if you don't have it when you get to the golf course, you're going to have a hard time getting in. So make sure you remember to bring that with you. Um, and make sure that you clip it on. I think they're on clips, right? They're not on, yeah, they're clips, okay. They're not on lanyards, so make sure you clip it. Um, you are permitted to use that credential all week. So if you're working on Thursday and Friday and you're not working on Saturday and Sunday, come back out. We'd love to have you out on Saturday and Sunday to spectate. If you do that, please do not wear your uniform because if you are wearing that uniform, people may approach you and if you're not working, we just, we want you off the clock. We want you enjoying it. Um, so don't wear your uniform if you're coming out on days you are not working. Uniform. You all received your uniform today, hopefully, um, with the awesome Dominion blue color on the top, whether shirt or pullover. Um, hopefully you don't even need that pullover tournament week, but we got it for you anyway. Um, and then we ask all of you to wear khaki bottoms, whether it's pants, um, shorts, or for women, a skirt is acceptable as well, but please make sure it's khaki of some sort. We do request that our volunteers are not asking for autographs from the players while you're volunteering. So if you come back on another day and you have that volunteer badge on, but you don't have your uniform on, do your thing. Ask for autographs. We'd love to have you get those if that's important to you. But please, while you're volunteering, we ask that you do not. The protocol, so you all know, if, if a spectator asks you, is that um, most of the players will not sign autographs until after the round. So they'll go into the um, scoring tent near the 18th green. They'll sign their scorecard. They'll walk out of there. And many of them will spend a good amount of time actually just kind of hanging out, signing autographs, whether it's on programs or hats or whatever. Um, but they'd like to do it after their rounds. And most of our guys are pretty good about that, and hopefully we'll see that um, our tournament week as well. I think, we've gone, I think we've gone over everything else there too. So I think this is my last slide, which is good. I got through it quickly. Volunteer party. We are all invited. Um, it's going to be on Saturday before the tournament, so Saturday the 29th. And we actually have shifted the location, so the new location is at the Country Club of Virginia's West Hampton Clubhouse. It is not going to be at the golf course at the James River course. The original plan was to put it in the volunteer tent there, but it's going to be at West Hampton. Um, and golf attire is fine for that. So again, thank you all for being here today, and I'll turn it over to Rudy. Thank you, Steve. What's expected of a marshal? Every day when the players come out with the caddies, they're not always smiling. They really aren't. Some of them haven't had a good round, <laughs> particularly if you were on the practice tee or putting green watching them putt the day before and you happen to say, hey, Bernard, I saw you standing next to the ball too close and you know, when you can't putt. <laughs> <laughs> when you're on your assigned hole, you are ours, you're the tournaments, we want you to be alert. Okay? Be aware of what's going on around you. Um, position yourself on arm's length from the ropes. Stand. When I say stand, that means we'd like you to out of the chair or out of the group, stand while play is going on on your hole. Okay? Assist players and caddies in locating balls outside the ropes. Be courteous and respectful. Allow spectators to view play. Here's the most important advice I can give you because we are going to make mistakes. Trust me. Every tournament has its little niches and stuff. It's okay, folks. Smile. Put that big smile on your face. You know what? It'll do wonders for you and the players. Trust me. 
talk a little bit about where you're going to be positioned. You'll be positioned either at the tee box, the fairway, at a crosswalk, gate path, or the green. Okay? So if you're at the tee box, um, there's a couple of commands, two commands that you have to understand. It's used on every tour. Stand please and quiet please. Stand please means that there's movement going on during play. That's your command to stop. If there's talk going on or conversation, quiet please. Two commands everybody understands. So remember those. So when you're on the tee box, if you're on the tee box, once you let the players, and I'll give you a little heads up, on Thursday, there'll be five players and five caddies coming up to the tee box because it's a pro-am. Okay? Friday through Sunday, there'll just be two players and two caddies. I've made this mistake many times. Starting tents right on the first tee, I open the gate, here come the two players, I shut the gate, and everybody's going, well, <laughs> you got three more players and caddies. So Thursday, remember, five players and caddies are coming up on that tee box. So if you're on the tee, once you've opened the gate, let them in. Now, they're human. They don't always go in the gate. Trust me. They crawl under the rope. They go behind the starting tent. Your job is to open the gate, try to usher them in. Okay, once they're in the gate, you close the gate. And this is the time when you see movement going on or spectators talking. This is when you say, stand please or quiet please. Stand please is not when they're here. <laughs> or quiet please is not when they're here, okay? It's when they get up on the tee box, put the ball on the ground on the tee, and they're ready to hit, okay? So as soon as they're in the tee box, and that's hard on the OEM day because you've got five people to get inside. So it takes a little longer. Sometimes somebody's straggling behind. You know what? Just sit, make the command, stand please, quiet please, okay. When you're on the green, you want to be out of the line of flight of an incoming ball, okay? So if you're in the middle of the green, generally I put uh, three, three uh, marshals on a green, left, right, center, or left, center, right. Incoming balls, you want to move to the left or the right so that they're not in the line of play, okay? On the tee box, after the player has hit his shot, what you want to do is either use your pairing sheet or your visor and give a straight, okay, or right or left. What we don't need are people going... <laughs> I don't know. The, cha the charge here is so that you at least try to give the fairway marshal who's out there looking into the sun an idea where the ball is gone, okay? So it's a simple, we need one person simply on the tee box, ball straight, ball to the right. A lot of times the players will say, four right, four left, okay? Ball goes outside the ropes. What I do? Run like hell. Um, this will happen Wednesday, and this will happen Thursday. <laughs> Friday through Sunday, not, not a big deal, okay? Ball goes outside the ropes, what do you do? You don't run like hell, you hide. You go over and locate the ball. You stand by the ball. Do not pick up the ball. And I say that. People have picked up the golf ball, seriously. Don't let the spectators touch the ball. Clear the spectators out of the way. Wait for player and caddy. Player and caddy will walk up to the ball, and in your desire to do a good job, you may just drop the ropes. Generally, they will, the caddy will walk over and probably indicate he wants the ropes dropped. Gates and crosswalks. There are probably four to five gates or crosswalks on the course as we know it now. They may add a couple of crosswalks, or they may delete some, okay? After the players have passed the crosswalk, that's when you open them for the spectators to go through. Remember, I mentioned on Thursday, five players, five caddies. Friday through Sunday, again, just um, the two players. At this point, two players and two caddies. Steve kind of mentioned about autographs. I won't go into detail, but we don't want to see you out there getting an autograph in a martial uniform. It just doesn't look good, particularly the TV cameras are rolling. Friday through Sunday with a golf channel. So if you're out of uniform, okay, but not while you're working. Whole captains will you chain of command, your whole captains will be your main point of contact. Each day they will pick up radios, tournament radios from communications. So they'll have a radio. 
if we need to get communication on first days, rules, whatever, you go through your whole captain, okay? I've asked the whole captain, I've given them a schedule, given them a schedule to do what I call a daily whole captain's meeting where they bring you all together. It could be at Volunteer Village, it could be on the tee box, it could be in the green, just to go over the day's activities. Or there's a chance that we may have weather coming in or the tea times have changed. So um, each of them have a, an agenda. So the whole captain's your main point of contact. Um, the, daily, the daily meetings, we hope they go, go through those. So again, players will give you feedback. You're gonna get feedback from players, Tournament staff, rules officials, me, George, Libby, you know, everybody. All you got to do is thank you, smile, smile, okay? Players, they don't always come out of the clubhouse in a good mood. Had round yesterday, shot 95, how am I doing? Not so good. <laughs> good morning. How was your game yesterday? You idiot, I shot 98. What, what, no. Here's my advice. You say good morning or good afternoon. Let the player initiate the conversation, okay? Marshals are scheduled to work Thursday through Sunday. We're going to staff holes 1, 9, 10, and 18 on Wednesday to kind of get a feel of how the flow goes. There'll be minimum, it won't be fully staffed, but Thursday's the day we fully staff. Two shifts on Thursday, okay? Two shifts. AM shift, PM shift. Four hour round. Friday through Sunday, five hour round, Thursday, okay? You're gonna be on this golf course by the time you park at shuttle, shuttle over here, get checked in a volunteer village, get your lunch ticket, and hoof it out to your hole, probably five to six hours, Friday through Sunday. Thursday's gonna be a long day, 12 hours, probably. So for those of you who signed up to, to work all day Thursday, God bless you, thank you. <laughs> So make sure you think about that as you drive up to get on the shuttle. You gotta get checked in, you wanna get your lunch voucher, and you wanna get out to your hole. There are no shuttles that are gonna be standing there going, hey, hop in, I'll take you out to 14. You've gotta get out there yourself, okay? So allow time for that. Now, there is a schedule called a tea time report to whole schedule. Does everybody pick one of those up? You can blame me, this is my creation. What this tells you is if you're assigned to hole number one on Thursday morning, based on what I know now as far as the tee time, this is when you should be at the hole this time, okay? So if you look at this schedule, this allows time for you to get to the volunteer village, to get out to your hole, okay? So look at this schedule. Now, Thursday a.m., Thursday p.m., Friday, Saturday, and Sunday are just one shift, okay? Is this subject to change? The scary part about this, it is. Weather, depending on conditions like they're having down in North Carolina, could change. We could have dew, we could have fog, we could have, may change. What we don't wanna do is be understaffed. It's okay if they move it ahead a little bit. We're not gonna call you up and say, guess what, we're 15 minutes later, so, Stay home for 15 minutes. But if they move up an hour, we're gonna call you and say, guess what? This has gone out the window. So be aware, this is a good guide based on what we know now. It tells you when to be on your hole, okay? Could it change? And if it changes, we'll make sure you get the information. Who's allowed inside the ropes? Well, obviously you are. Again, arm's length, not out in the middle of the fairway, going, hey, this is very nice out here. <laughs> Hey, it happens, it happens. I don't know about the situation with animals, but on my golf course, we got 27 deer and the Bambis that are running across the golf course all the time. So I don't know if we have that problem here with, with animals, but you gotta be aware of them. You know? We've had tournaments stop because we got geese on the greens. I mean, but nope, arms length for the rope. Players are obviously allowed, caddies. Tournament staff, Steve and his staff. Standard bearers, standard bearers, everybody know what standard bearers are, they carry the Standard, okay. Walking scores, they're calculating the scores. Rules officials, heads up. Rules officials has a thing on the front of it that says, rules official. <laughs> when they come to the ropes and they want to get under, they're not gonna say, hey, you know, did you lift up the ropes? They're going. Please don't stop them. 
We've had that happen too many times. Rules officials, okay? And first aid, priority. Anyone on this golf course that has an injury, and I'll, I'll jump ahead a little bit, but anybody on the golf course that has an injury, that's a priority, okay? It's a priority. Whole captains have radios. You need to tell us where it is. If you just say, first aid, where? Uh, out there. <laughs> We'd like you to say, ninth fairway, right, spectator hit by ball, or spectator down. Gives first aid a little update on what's going on, rather than sending all the carts out, all the defib stuff. You know, if somebody got hit in the head with a ball, got a little beating, they can fix it. You communicate that through your whole captains, okay? The best advice, I use crossed arms over your head. Signal the whole captain that you need first aid. Then the whole captain will contact first aid, and you'll probably get tournament staff or first aid coming out immediately. Plus George, Libby, myself, and Greg. So, priority. Any questions on first aid? And there will be honorary observers in the last 16 groups that'll play, is it Thursday through Sunday, Steve? Friday through Sunday, the last 16 groups will have two honorary observers. They'll have big credentials. They will be inside the ropes with the players. Okay, their credentials, they're allowed inside the ropes. And of course, my favorite golf channel. Any TV, they're gonna go wherever they want. Don't even think about it. <laughs> Stay away. <laughs> Let them go. Let the rules officials deal with it and the tournament staff. Trust me, I've tried too many years to say, you can't go there. Well, guess what? They're going. The only other thing I've got to be careful of is concessions. Sometimes, you know, concession carts are running around, filling concession stands, and they tend to maybe take a shortcut. Those we can control. But Golf Channel, mm -mm. Yes, you have a question. What about other media? Um, all media will be credentialed, OK? Some will be inside the ropes. They'll have credentials. There will be media also outside the ropes that are allowed to take pictures. So you bring up a good point. What happens if, and I'm jumping ahead a little bit, we have a few holes that we now know may create some concerns for us because they border the golf course. Residents have already notified us that they plan on having some hospitality functions going on, which means quaffing. Quaffing is drinking. When you start drinking on a golf course, players or people tend to wander. Look, it's a tournament. Hey, that's Fred Couples. I'm going to go talk to him. Okay. That's probably going to be a challenge for us. There are a number of holes. 12, 10, 13, 11, 9, 8, 5, 4, 3. <laughs> Be alert, because <laughs> somebody's going to try to get on this golf course without a credential. What is your job? Uh, not the challenge. Your job, we don't want to put you in a confrontational stand, but the people will do that, though. They'll say, listen, I, I know Freddie. I'm coming right over there, right in Cat Freddie. You're going, no, no, sir, you're on the golf course. It's private property. Go, sir, stand, get a hold of your whole captain, let the whole captain get a hold of tournament staff and security. You met our security person, okay? That's your job, not confrontational. Rudy, can I hop in here real quick? I'm glad you brought this up. Um, we, the tournament staff, have been in touch with, not all, but many of the folks that have indicated that they're gonna have a gathering at their home. So we're aware of many of them. I'm sure some we are not. The official stance that we are taking is that if those folks want to come to the golf tournament and they have a ticket in their hand, they need to use the main tournament entrance, which is adjacent, you, get, you can get it off of Gaskins Road near the ninth green. That is the stance that we are taking. Um, we're trying to work with the folks that live really close um, on the holes that Rudy mentioned, which are many, um, to make sure that they do that. And like Rudy said, I want to stress, it is not your job to prevent them from coming on the golf course. We do not want to put you in that situation. Your, your role is to let your whole captain know that that's occurring, and then the whole captain will get to security. Now, the chain of reaction there is it could take some time, and if the folks are walking on the golf course, it's all right, you know, no, no reacting to them. The challenge we have is that, and correct me if I'm wrong here, is that most of those holes that border the golf course or that are you know, bordering the neighborhood, we are not permitting spectators, is that correct, 
on that side of the hole. So if someone wa uh, that lives on the ninth fairway walks out of their backyard onto the golf course, they're in play. That's a problem. <laughs> and we've let them know that. So again, you know, a lot of the holes that are close to, that are near Gaskins Road, it's kind of easy to get their guests to the main entrance and it's not really inconvenient, but we do realize that if you live to the east of the golf course, um, it's not quite as easy and not as inconvenient. So there could be a situation where, you know, something where folks are trying to get on the golf course there. Again, just the chain of reaction, let your whole captain know that. Sure. Will it be roped? It will be roped. So good question. Thank you for asking that. So even though that side of the golf course will not have spectators, there will be a rope line. I'm not going to stop anybody from coming on the golf course, but officially there will be a rope line right up against the edge of the golf course um, and, the, and that property. So good question. Um, we obviously just, we're not in a position to put chain link fence up and, and secure the space. I mean, you all know, the expense and, you know, we just, frankly, that's not the atmosphere that we want to put out there anyway. So if that all makes sense, and again, if you have questions later, we're glad to answer those for you. So thank you. We kind of talked about uh, photographs. I won't go into great detail, but that's, what, that's what's required, okay? So photos on Thursday, okay? Now, here we got um, Freddie Couples up on the tee box, and all of a sudden somebody, ch -ch 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 what do you do? You don't say, hey, no cameras. You simply either look at the person, walk over to them, gently, nicely, be courteous, smile, and say, excuse me, no cameras today. Okay? If they're persistent about it, we got a security issue. Okay? Any questions on photography? Talked about first aid, security. Um, you, you, we've talked about security. I won't go into a lot of detail, but let me talk a little bit about weather warning and evacuation. This is a huge, huge, there is a separate committee called EVAC committee that will do this job. I'm going to work with them, but this is a very, very demanding job. Because if weather, by the way, PGA has radar. So they know when the storm's coming. When they blow the siren, that means you, Marshall volunteers, leave the golf course. You encourage everyone else to leave the golf course. But your job is not to clear the golf course. You simply move to Volunteer Village, OK? And that siren goes off. That's your note to leave. What it does, it starts the evac process, OK? There are 12 evacuation vans, 15 pass 12 passenger vans strategically placed on the golf course. We will do a dry run probably Tuesday, where we'll actually drive the route, should that siren go off, so they know exactly where they're going to go. They'll end up at the clubhouse. They'll stage there. And then they'll go back out to the hole once plays restarted. OK. Their job is to pick up players, caddies, standard bearers, walking scores, honorary observers, if possible, not marshals. OK. So don't be standing by the van going, hey, I need a lift. Their job is to get the players and the caddies to the clubhouse, OK? So when that siren goes off and we have an evac notice, which can happen, but it won't happen, um, that's their job, OK? They will drive a specified route on the golf course. Now let me tell you a little about the delay of play. Siren goes off. We get everybody in. It's not going to be 15 minutes. Because once they blow the siren to clear, the players get to do what? They get to go warm up. Okay, So I would plan, if there's a legitimate suspension of play, 45 minutes to an hour. So if you decide that you don't want to wait anymore, and you go, don't go home. Because we could restart play, OK? So there are weather warnings on all the scoreboards on the golf course. So pay attention to those, OK? Ah. <laughs> No, 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 no. <laughs> Player hits the ball out of bounds or hits the ball in the water, walks up to you and says, uh, where's the drop zone? Oh, it's over here. No. The best advice is you do not give advice, OK? You go to the hole captain. Let the hole captain go to the rules official, OK? They are strategically placed in carts, timing the groups throughout the golf course. So it's not like they're sitting up in a tent somewhere waiting for a call. They're on the golf course, and they're pretty responding. We get to the hole captain, have the hole captain call in, and we get rules that do not give a ruling. <laughs> Smile, be courteous, but say, we will call for a ruling. 
Now, some players go, ah, God, how long is that going to take? Well, how much time do you have? You know, it's kind of that kind of thing. But it's pretty respond. It's not like they're going to wait 15 minutes because we've got pace of play going on. Anyway. Something else. I have something else to add to that. Players are not permitted to accept a ride in a golf cart back to the tee if they need to re-tee the lost ball. They should know that, however, they may not. So you all as volunteers, if you are in a golf cart out there, which many of you will not be, but if you are, you do not offer players a ride back to the tee. They cannot, they cannot accept that. If they do, they're DQ'd. By the way, there are no carts. Players are walking. Amateurs are walking Wednesday through Sunday. Players are walking Wednesday through Sunday. There are no golf carts. Players are not using carts. OK, let me wrap up here. Um, We have two other committees, one, one run by John Epps and Scott Hesker. John Hesker is running the roving marshals. What do they do? We got like 16 people that are on the roving marshal committee. Their job is, we believe there's going to be a lot of congestion between nine green and 10 tee box. So we got to get the player, the caddies from that green through the spectators over to the 10th tee. So that's what the rovers are going to do. They'll be with a few designated groups. They won't be with all the groups, okay? Their job is to get the player and the caddy over to the next tee box, OK? And depending on, I understand now we've moved the um, scoring trailer down to 18, yep. 18. OK. Yep. In the past, we were going to have to move them from 18 green up to the scoring trailer up by the clubhouse. But anyway, so that's, the, that's what the roving marshals will do, OK? There'll be, there'll be two with each group, kind of just shuttling through the spectators. Players coming through, players coming through. If you had a car, you just drive the cart, you know, cart coming through. But and then the second committee is the practice range and putting area, headed up by uh, John Epps. It's, John's not here, but he's got a committee of like 30 people. And their job is to help the tournament staff on the practice range, you know, picking up balls, washing balls, putting the player name tags out um, on the putting green, keeping people outside the putting green area. The putting green we're going to be using will be the putting green in front of the clubhouse. Both. Oh, both, OK. So they'll be staffing that on a regular basis, OK? So those are two more committees. Now, somebody mentioned the, um, the, I mentioned the honorary observers. I also wanted to mention the Patriots Outpost. Important. It's a military uh, tribute. They'll be behind the outpost, or the hospitality or chalet will be behind the 10th green. OK? We don't want to recognize that. You are a committee of over 400. But you're the largest part of this 1,200-member committee. Over 400 volunteers are going to be working on the golf course. It's what you do starting Wednesday morning, for those of you that are working, through Sunday, that will have a significant impact on how successful this tournament is, believe me. Thank you all for volunteering. If you have any questions, please see me. Good luck. Let's have a lot of fun. Remember to smile. Thank you.